What's cracking Jump Nation family? It's your boy here, Rushi S, aka The Jump Rope Coach. Welcome back to the home of Jump Rope Fitness and Lifestyle people. Today we have, of course, as you know, another fire jump rope tutorial. This one is for my beginner family and it's answering a question that I get quite often, right? Especially from people who first pick up a skipping rope, whether or not their elbows should be in or whether their elbows should be back. Now, if you've been watching this channel for a long time, guys, you'll see the style that I've kind of created has always been the better style for my body, for my style, for my action, my form, etc. is always elbows back. Now, is that the best way or the right way or should people be skipping like you probably see from back in the day from all the photos when people first start skipping, they always have their arms kind of in like this and their wrists further out. So we're just gonna go through the pros and cons and hopefully if you guys can move to a backward action like this, especially if you wanna try and imitate my style, you'll see that it's the better one overall, okay? So gonna get straight into this video, peeps. Remember, if you're new to the channel and don't know what the hell is going on, just hit the subscribe button, trust me. We'll make sure your cardio lifestyle is changed forever, right? We're backed up by the number one skipping ropes on the internet. Check our links down below. Use Rush 10 for 10% discount. Today I'm using the Money Rip Performance Orange Edition, all right? Now, what I'm gonna try and teach you, hopefully in this video, and it's not gonna be too long, is everyone can skip from this position, all right? With the elbows tucked in, all right? We're not talking wide out like this. This is super beginner, we're not there. But some people do like to have their elbows tucked in like this, wrists out. What people tend to do from here is they can have a nice action, they can have really nice fluid double unders. They can always cross from there as well. And what I found from guys, girls, peeps who do this is that they generally don't have any issues, right? They can skip well, they can get their workouts in and they can do most of the moves or tricks you've ever seen on this channel. But when I am working with someone and I am teaching them certain moves, such as a double under crossover or quick crossovers, what I tend to find is that they'll struggle a little bit more than someone who adopts my style which is the elbows back, you know, the posture is, a, is slightly different, but the main key from my style is that the wrists, the wrists will sit closer. They'll be in a closer kind of proximity to each other rather than having the elbows in and the wrists flared out. What it also does and what it also changes, I'm gonna show you close up here, is let's say your arms, elbows even, are tucked in like this nicely, your wrists are turning this rope around. What you'll find is the people who do this have a more stiffer or more rigid action with their wrist control. Now what that does is when they're doing things like double unders is that they tend to flick down in this action for the double for the ropes to go around and it will catch the rope on the handle edge and lead to breaks, right? Lead to snaps on the ropes. Um, another thing as well is when they're trying to spin this rope around, the speed that they can obtain is limited by how quickly they can move these wrists rather than my action, which is when the elbows are back, I'm pushing the rope around forward, if that kind of makes sense. I'm throwing this rope forward, and I've talked about this on many kind of previous videos where I talk about wrist control. If you're throwing the rope in front of you, you're actually moving with the rope. You're moving this handle with the rope because the rope goes around us in this forward action, as opposed to trying to flick it around us with this wrist action here, it's harder to gain more speed. Whereas here, I can feel like I'm throwing this rope out in front of me, it gets more speed and then on top of that I'm using my thumbs to push down and forward rather than just down laterally or down horizontally right so it's, it takes a bit of time to understand this just give it a go if you're watching this video just think about when you're doing a double under for example if you're doing a double under with your arms or your wrist further away the only way to get speed is really if you're just jerking these hands downwards as opposed to when I do it now I literally feel like I feel like I'm trying to actually get my arc closer together. I feel like it's narrower around my body rather than a wider arc. And again, that will then help the rope cut through the air a lot more quicker, it's a lot more streamlined. So that's another benefit of having this kind of action that I have. Another one as well is by having the wrists closer together, peeps, is there's a lot less distance for these wrists to go when you're doing something like a crossover. So for example, let's say you're doing my action here where the wrists are feeling closer together. When it comes to crossing now, that space here to cross is a lot less than someone who has their elbows tucked in and then their wrists here, they have a lot more distance to go across their body for this cross to happen, which in turn, again, limits your speed. So if I do it now with the wrist further away, this action, although it does look quick on camera, I already know there's a lot of movement and a lot more, I guess, room for error 
that can occur rather than having your wrist closer together. So that's another pro on my side why I tend to like this action. Now this again is something new, like a lot of the times when boxers used to do skipping, you see their arms always wider apart, you always see their wrists wider apart, and it was just something natural when people see people or other people skipping, this is how it would look. And with my style, because my rope appears longer on camera, and it is actually a longer rope than most people, but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to have my wrist sit higher because my elbows and my shoulders get retracted which then allows the rope to look to be longer, but then also make sure that I'm only clipping the, the ground really lightly. With a, with a wrist action or with your wrist out here, the point of contact for the rope is a lot wider on the floor, right? And this actually makes a massive difference as well. So let's say we're here, you can see there's a wider surface area for the rope to hit with your wrist further apart. Whereas when I bring my wrist in, you can see the U shape. There's a little bit more of a kind of closer contact with the floor. It's not so wide. And having a wider wrist action like this will lead to you shortening your rope. So you're prone to more trips. So with the wrist close now, I can always feel like I've got a little bit more, again, room for error, especially when doing things like double unders or double under crossovers. Because if you're now thinking doing a double under crossover from wide wrists like this, you know, I actually have to feel like I have to jump higher and it doesn't feel comfortable because my wrists are having, again, to travel more distance and the rope is a little bit more pulled. So it's gonna be shorter rather than having the wrist closer and the point of contact on the floor being a lot more kind of, yeah, it just feels like I've got a lot more room, okay? So this is something that comes down to comfort and it's really important and I don't want this video to be too long, but you always have to feel comfortable when you are skipping. That's, the, that's rule number one for me. Anytime someone new comes or a client comes in, sees me, even though if I say to them, bring the wrist closer, have the arms sitting backwards, it may not fit for you guys. It may be something to do with the body shape, body type, two big lats, big back, big arms, whatever it may be, but you have to feel comfortable. So this is just really just to give you an understanding of what is what could be the better method for you. Having your shoulders back like this as well, for me anyway, it allows better posture. That's the final point, is when I feel like I'm skipping, and if you watch this channel for a long time, the posture or the control on my body always feels like, yeah, I have that control. It helps because it allows me to pull my shoulders back, give me a little bit more of a chest out feeling, straight back feeling. Whereas when I've seen people with their wrists out, it doesn't really allow them to engage their core as much as potentially I could from here or kind of straighten their back up. Um, and they tend to also kind of be a little bit more off balance. And again, I think that's just down to the fact that it's just not, yeah, tight or conditioned, if that makes sense. Like it doesn't allow the body to really have that feeling of just being stable, simply because, again, with your hands being wider apart, anytime you're doing moves such as southpaw, the hands are just moving so far across the body, it's naturally gonna make you spin a little bit out of control. Whereas, if we're a bit more tighter, we can engage more wrist action and more speed and everything just feels a lot more stable and in place. So hopefully this video makes a bit of sense. Uh, it's a little bit more technical than previous ones, but I think it's important for the beginners, people who are just getting into it to kind of understand the differences. And as always, if you found it useful, people give it a big thumbs up. That'd be really useful for me. Allow this video to reach more people, get more people into the skipping game, of course, and change their lives. And otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Drop a comment, let me know what you wanna see going forward. I'll get it done for you as usual. So guys, thank you so much for the love and support. See you in the next one. Take care of yourself, skip the treadmill, stay safe. Peace. Was the knight in shining armor in your movie? Put your lips on mine and love the aftertaste now